All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. This is the show we cover the swag inside and out. Of course, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See what's coming at you. And we are continuing our 12 team preseason previews uh, for the 2024 season. And we are up to the Jackson State Tigers today. So we're going to talk, uh, talk JSU football and my expectations for the upcoming season. Um, you can check out my Twitter uh, account, which is Spike Talk 76. Um, I have a pinned tweet that lists the dates of all the upcoming uh, previews. So we have text, we have Jackson State obviously dropping now. Uh, Valley is on Wednesday. Uh, next Sunday um, is Prairie View. Next Wednesday is Southern. Uh, the following Sunday is Texas Southern. And then the, the following Wednesday after that is Pine Bluff to wrap up our preseason previews. After that will be our week zero preview. And then we'll have our recap of the on the week zero game. So it's all laid out for you right now. Um, you know, we are in August now and, you know, fall camp is open up for pretty much everybody now. So, you know, it, it, it's on and popping. Um, also, you get the Facebook and Instagram, both are swag talk um, to, to, to get any, you know, get anything that's going on with the show. I uh, like the video, comment and uh, share. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, become a part of the Swag Talk fam, and um, hit that notification bell to be alerted when videos drop. Um, Thursday is Swag Smoke, 6, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, and that's all our housekeeping. So we're going to go ahead and talk Jackson State football. Uh, 2023 season was a 7-4 and four season for the Tigers, 5-3 uh, and three in conference. You know, the previous two years, this was a team that you know that ran through the conference, won two swag championships. Uh, they had a huge turnover, and um, to finish seven and four, you know, with basically a brand new team, I think is you know a pretty is a pretty solid effort. Um, of course, you know they had that great MEAC swag challenge um, against South Carolina State, and then things kind of got a little bit rocky to a degree, um, but they 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 righted the course. And closed out pretty strong. Uh, offensively, this team was really good. Defensively, um, they took a step back from where they were, which is to be expected when you lose, you know, so many people, um, especially on, on the defensive side of the ball. But uh, I think this defense is going to be better um, this season, and we'll talk about that in our in our 2024 preview. But of course, here what we do first is we kind of look back at you know where this team was in the 23 season. And um, they were fourth offensively in scoring offense at 27.3 points per game, uh, fifth in scoring defense at 23.9 points per game. Uh, total offense, they led the league in total offense at 389.4 yards per game, scored 38 touchdowns, averaged 5.6 yards per play, which was the uh, which was the fifth most in the league. Defensively, they ranked fourth in total defense at 335 yards per game, 36 touchdowns, um, 5.4 yards per play allowed. Uh, rushing offense, they were third at 161 yards per game, scored 17 touchdowns, averaged four and a half yards per carry, uh, which was third in the league. Uh, defensively against the run, they were not, you know, they weren't average. They weren't bad or good. 148 and a half yards per game allowed 4.6 yards per carry. 20 touchdowns, which um, was one of the higher numbers in the league. Uh, that was fifth, uh, that number there. Um, and the yard per carry was um, was th was the third highest in the conference. So they did give up some, you know, some 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 big yardage on the ground um, in, from time to time, especially just individual plays, and that that kind of hurt them a little bit uh, this this past season. Uh, passing offense, they were second. Uh, 227 yards per game, had 21 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Uh, those four interceptions are, by, are the fewest of any team in the conference by four interceptions. So they did a great job of taking care of the football. Um, defensively, they um, averaged 187.4 yards per game, which was fourth in the league, allowed 16 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. Those 17 interceptions led the league and was tops in the top, top tier in the country. So the defense did a really good job of um, forcing turnovers and they didn't turn the ball over much as an the offense. Uh, they just, you know, just kind of steady. You know, I think, you know, when you look at what his defense was the previous years, um, of course, it looks like it took a step back. But 
it didn't really take a it, it took a step back from what they were, but not necessarily took a step back for when you compare it to the rest of the league. Of course, the running defense, you know, you kind of want to get that a little bit better. But, you know, that that's, you know, one of the few things that they really honestly had issue with. Uh, the biggest thing that this team did have issue with was special teams. Um, I've never seen a team with so much bad breaks on special teams last season. They didn't really cover well um, on, on, on in the return game. Uh, and then in the kicking game, they really um, they had a lot of injuries. And, and, you know, they, they actually, you know, they, they, um, they lost the punter for a while. They lost kickers. You know, they brought in, you know, they brought in different people. Um, they actually, you know, brought in a, a, a young lady, uh, Leilani Armenta, to kick. She kicked three extra points against Pine Bluff. Uh, her first game was against Bethune Cookman, and uh, she's back on the roster. Um, and like I said, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the returning people. Uh, in a minute, but special teams was just, you know, it was a, it was a crapshoot for JSU last season. Um, I don't think that you, you have to deal with, um, those kind of, um, snake bit situations this season. At least you hope not. Um, they, you know, they kind of, you know, struggled in, uh, in kick returns, you know, getting, getting guys on the ground. Um, but they, you know, they, they were able to get healthy and the kicking game kind of improved a little bit. Uh, they finished third in the league in field goals at 66%, 10 of 15. Um, they were um, they were ninth in extra points, 32 or 35 for 91%. And they finished the, the season 10th um, in net punting average at 32.2 yards per punt. Um, they allowed an average of 5.1 yards per kick return, which was the second highest in the conference. Uh, Per punt average, they averaged uh, 38.5 yards per punt. And, you know, obviously that's, you know, mixing mixing people in and, you know, kind of having a, a, a different guy uh, every, every so often. So uh, they kind of struggled there. But uh, they allowed, uh, as an offensive line, they allowed uh, 27 sacks, which was seventh in the league. They generated 29 sacks, which was third in the league. Um, like I say, they, they, they led the league in interceptions with 17. Uh, they forced they forced um, six fumbles on the season, which was um, tenth in the league, and they recovered um, they recovered uh, five of those fumbles. So they, you know, they did a pretty solid job of forcing turnovers, um, and that's something that you kind of want to continue to see them do. Uh, they they were third in the league in third down conversion rate at thirty eight point seven. They were fourth in third down defense at thirty three point six. Uh, fourth down conversion rate, they were uh, first at 73%, 14 and 19. Uh, they, you know, their 19 attempts was basically in the middle. Um, they're ranked seventh. So they, you know, they they were kind of even with, you know, kind of the, the midpoint uh, of numbers when you look at it in terms of fourth down conversions attempts. Uh, fourth down defense, they were uh, eighth at 59.1%. Opponents went for it 22 times uh, and got it 13. Uh, also, this team was a uh, average 66.4 uh, yards per game in penalties. Uh, that was eighth in the league. Uh, they had 82 total penalties, which was fifth in the league. The opponents were penalized uh, 77 times, which would make make that uh, se- uh, sixth in the league. And they had an average of... 59 and a half yards per game, which was sixth in the league. Um, in the red zone, his team was um, 29 of 39 for 74%. They had 22 touchdowns and tw- uh, 12 rushing touchdowns, 10 passing touchdowns, seven of nine on field goals in the red zone, and seven turnovers. Uh, the red zone defense, they were 27 of 37 uh, for 73%. 26 touchdowns allowed, 15 on the ground, 11 through the air. Opponents were one for four on field goals in the red zone, and they forced five turnovers in the red zone. Um, I'm counting um, turnovers on downs, you know, with the with the turnover uh, numbers. Uh, when you look at um, some of the individual um, leaders, Irv Mulligan um, led the team in um, in rushing at 674 yards, five and a half yards per carry, five touchdowns. If he doesn't get injured, he's probably a thousand yard back. Um, they return their top 
six rushers, um, and maybe even maybe even more than that. Um, their 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 running their running back room is is stacked. Um, they return a lot of guys who had carries, and you know that's 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 a big you know that's a big thing. Continuity is huge. They and yeah, they return really um, the top seven rushers. And, and the funny thing is, um, then this is just an odd thing to me. Um, there's top six rushers. They, they all their last name start with M. So you know, I, 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 you know, that's just that's just one of those odd things that kind of always, um, kind of always stands out to me. But um, they, you know, they they can run the football. That that's one thing that they can do. Um, and I think they'll continue to do that. Um, I think the the passing attack um, is, is a little bit different now. You know, with Jacoby and Morgan at quarterback, um, he has a, obviously has a different dimension with his legs um, to help extend plays and you know he he was pretty solid you know passing the ball last season uh, he finished um 83 of 123 842 yards 10 touchdowns and one interception uh so he you know he really did a pretty solid job uh they returned their top two leading receivers um Fabian McCray is a guy who is getting a lot of praise this season um all swag uh box roll preseason all American uh 41 catches 584 yards uh, four touchdowns. He's gonna be a big, a big threat on this offense. And you know, like I said, you you know they're losing some other guys there, but you know this this is a team that you know is very active in the portal. And um, they you know they did a pretty good job of of, of going after guys and, and getting guys on you know on both sides of the ball that can contribute um, to this team right right now. You know they're not looking to. You know, bring in guys and sit them and 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 make them kind of grow with you. They're they're you know they're bringing in guys who they expect to kind of um, kind of come in and play. Um, when I when I look at some of the guys, especially you know like um, receivers like um, Tyquan Henderson from Southern Miss or um, Jamel Gardner from Kent State, I think guys like that are going to come in and try to you know try to carve out a niche um, in in that offense. Um, they brought in Cameron McCoy from um, Eastern Michigan. He's a quarterback. He's a guy who is probably going to try to challenge. Um, but they also got a couple other guys from from Eastern Michigan um, as well. So um, in Bison, uh, Bryson Moss and Cameron Smith, uh, running back and defensive back, uh, respectively. Um, I, I think the thing for this defense is, you know, is making sure the D line re- remains solid. Um, I think you know they they're going to have to do a better job of stopping the run um if this team can slow down teams and uh you know cut down that their, their, their those opponent rushing numbers a bit i think this defense is going to be fine i think it may take them a couple a couple games to kind of get their footing but i think this team is built for success you know i think the schedule lays out for them and we're going to talk about the schedule in a minute um the schedule lays out well for them right now and i think they have an opportunity to get on a run early um, before they they get into the meat of, of some of their tougher games, um, one key one key point that I didn't you know that I found out recently, um, Dylan Watson, who was um, the leading returning kicker, uh, he's no longer on the team, so um, that leave you know that leaves a couple opportunities for for players. Um, like I said, uh, Leilani Amenta, I'm sure she's gonna be in the mix. Uh, Basil, um, at, uh, at kicker is also going to be in the mix. Uh, he, he did, you know, he was a guy who, um, did a lot of kicking for them. Um, so, you know, they also have, uh, Jalen Ballard, who's a kicker punter, um, to also compete. Uh, Matt Noel is the, is the punter. He's all conference, uh, box to roll all American as well. Um, it says Guthrie is the, the leader in the secondary. Um, I, th- I think that defense is gonna, you know, I think that defense is gonna improve. I think, you know, they're gonna, you know, I think they're gonna be aggressive and they're gonna make some things happen. Uh, they got Robert McDaniel to come over from Alcorn also to kind of help out in the secondary. Um, I think this defense is gonna be solid. I think they're gonna, um, they may not be, um, a spectacular unit, but I think they're gonna be a very, uh, a very solid unit. Uh, they get Austin Edmonds from uh, Bryant to come in at linebacker. Also, John Brown from McNeese uh, on the D line. 
Um, uh, Jaden Ward is another linebacker that's coming over from um, from Northwestern State. Um, you know, so they they're adding, you know, they're adding some guys um, to help out in in that in that room um, on the defensive side of the ball. And I think as long as the defense can you know can make some plays and get the stops they need, uh, I think the offense, especially that running game, um, is gonna be spectacular. Especially if Irv Mulligan can stay healthy. Um, I think he ha- he can he is if he's healthy he's the top back in the conference. I'm not even gonna argue uh, or hear any argument about <laughs> anybody being better than him if he's healthy. Um, he's probably the, my favorite guy to watch run the football because he just does not go down um, with one guy. So you know he's gonna always get those tough yards. He's gonna always be twisting and turning and falling forward, and that helps your offense. Um, and then having a guy you know in next to him. Uh, at the quarterback spot, who can run the ball, and you know who can be a you know be a big factor in the run game, and then you know hurt teams with his arm if if they disrespect it. Um, I think that makes for a a, a a great backfield combination. That's that's a six four, two hundred twenty seven pound quarterback, and um, a five ten, two hundred five running back. You know that that's that's a lot of weight in the backfield, a lot of lot of size and power uh, to run the football. So. That makes, you know, that makes things a lot easier to move the ball when you're picking up four and five yards on, fir- on first down or second down and in third and shorts. Um, and you didn't, you know, you're a team who didn't turn the ball over a lot last season. And that's always a plus to me. Um, they were plus nine in the turnover battle uh, in turnover margin. So you win in the turnover battle almost every time, uh, every game. You know, if you can do that, that helps a lot. Um, the Bama State game was a game that they turned the ball over a bit. You know, th- those are, you know, and those are the kind of games you lose when you take care of the football. You win. When you don't, you lose. I mean, it's not always cut and dry 100% that way, but, you know, it, it kind of typically factors out that way. So if this team can continue to force turnovers on defense, take care of the ball on, def- on offense, they're going to be good. Um, if they avoid that, that, um, Snake bite on 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 the kicking kicking unit, and everybody remains healthy. That's a solid unit. Um, the return game is gonna, you know, you're still looking for somebody to kind of be a breakout uh, player in that in that aspect. And you you know you need to be solid in your coverage units. Um, you don't want to give away all that hidden yardage. But you know, I think that this you know last season was a learning experience for Coach Taylor. I think he's you know he's more comfortable. He, he's he's more you know ready for everything. And, you know, I think this team can win the division. I think this team can win the conference. Um, and I think they have a great shot at that. You know, they'll pick third in the conference in the division right now. I don't see them finishing third, but um, that top three is going to be tough, at least on paper right now. Um, I, I think that kind. I think this team is kind of getting the short end of the stick out of the expectations of everybody. And I don't really think that's fair. Um, I think that I think this team is a lot better than a lot of people think, you know, and I think they're going to I think they're going to prove that. And like I said, that schedule really uh, that schedule really kind of supports that fact uh, when you kind of uh, sit back and, and, and look at where they are. Um, and we're going to run through the schedule now and, and I'll give my thoughts um, on that. All right. They open up their season against uh, ULM. And to me, you know, it, if there is a game in the SWAC, um, that's the FBS game, I would say that this is a game that is very winnable. It, it's ULM. This, this is not a good, you know, this is not a good program. You know, they've been down for a long time. Um, they, Jess, you probably, Jess, you should have beat them the, the last time they played them. And I think they have a good chance here. Um, if they can, you know, take care of the football and, and you know play solid defense, but it's gonna be tough to get out of there with a win because I feel like you know if you do have good opportunities happen, it's always gonna be you know those extra forces working against you, um, and that's the only reason why I, I I don't put this as a dub uh, because I do think they can win this game, but you know I think that it'd be tough for them to get out of there. Um, unless they just blow them out the water. So I don't like to mark that one as an L, but I'm going to just put it down for now. Um, and then from there, they have three other non-conference games. Um, 
all are very winnable. Uh, you got Lane uh, in the WC Gordon Classic on September 7th. You know, you play, you, you, as long as you don't crap the bed, you win that game. Uh, you get Southern um, on the 14th in the Boombox Classic. Um, I think at this point in the season, you're better than Southern. Um, Southern, you know, not, I'm not saying Southern can't be good, but, you know, right now I think when you look at those two teams, JSU has a lot of advantages. Um, and, and, and Southern, you know, they, they don't right now. So, and it's, and it's at home, and JSU won four straight. So, you know, there's a lot of things working for you in a, in a positive manner if you Jackson State. And I think that's a game that you should win. Um, I think, you know, if I had to do a favorite, you'd be favored in this game. Um, but, you know, it's still, you know, it, it, I don't think it's a huge, huge um, spread, but, you know, it can be considered a toss up. But for the most part, I think JSU is, is a pretty decent favorite there. Uh, same thing with Gremlin. Uh, the only difference is this game is in Grambling. You know, sometimes strange things happen in the hole, but I, I, I think that, again, you know, Grambling has a lot of questions and it's early in the season that uh, there are only two games at this point are going to be a uh, FBS game and a D2 game. So, you know, this will be Grambling's first FCS game. Um, so, you know, this will be their first game against a like opponent. We, we don't really know where this team is going to be at at this portion in the season. So I think that bodes well for JSU. Uh, then you get Texas Southern in Houston. Again, another team who, you know, they have a new coach. You know, they you know, we we don't really know they're losing that top, you know, that top weapon on their offense, um, Ladarius Owens. Um, they still have some solid individual talent, but I don't know how good of a team they're gonna be. And it's again very early. So I, I think that bodes well for JSU there. Um, and then you get um, um, Alabama and him in, in the um, Golf Coast Challenge. I think this is going to be a motivated a and team this season. I think they know that their backs are against the wall, um, and they, you know, they want to, you know, keep their coach. Then I think they, I think they know they need to win some of these games. And you know, last season they had a tough time with JSU um, early, but they, you know, they need to, they need to win. But I think this. Is another game for JSU. I think that they can, they'll be favored in, and I think they can win it. And that takes you to um, your bye week on October 12th. And then on October 19th, you have uh, the FAMU game, which is a game that a lot of people are looking forward to. Um, it's a game that I'm looking forward to. If Southern didn't have homecoming that weekend, I would definitely be there um, in the house because I, I this this is, this has been a long time coming for these two teams to match up um, on campus, uh, at least on, <laughs> at least, in a um in, in a home environment for JSU and then on campus at FAMU when they play uh, next season, but you know I, I think you know this is this is a game this is the first real toss up game on the schedule. Um, there's two there you know there's two games in the East for for three teams that matter, and th- this is the first one for JSU. Um, I do think that that JSU can win this game. You know, again FAMU we don't really know. Um, I, I, I'm pretty high on FAMU, but we, we don't really know. This is going to be a tough road environment for them. Um, I do think JSU can win this game. Um, and you know, I, 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 I'm predicting some kind of odd tie between at least two of the three teams in the East. Um, so, you know, I think you have to, you know, you're going to have to win, you know, win those games. Um, I do like JSU in this game. I, I think, you know, it's, it's like a, uh, a 51 49, you know, probability of victory, um, however you want to put it. But I, I think this is the first tough game for, for JSU in, in the conference play. And, you know, it's a must win. Uh, I do think they can win it. Um, and I'm, I'm leaning that way right now. Uh, after that, they have uh, three games against teams who are probably going to be battling um, for the bottom half of their divisions. Um, Again, Bethune Cookman on the 26th on the road. So it's a little treacherous because it's, I think it's homecoming in, in, in Daytona. So it's a little treacherous, but um, I think you can survive that. Uh, you get Pine Bluff on uh, November 2nd at home, and then you get Valley at home on the 9th. So th- those are three games that if you, you know, if you come out of fam, you, you know, with a win, then you, you have a great opportunity of setting yourself up for a, a huge stretch run at the end of the season. Uh, before you close out um, 
close out with a tough two game stretch um, at Bama State and at Alcorn. Um, that this can be the make or break stretch of the season for you. Um, these are two tough games. You know, I mean, obviously Alcorn is always going to be tough. Um, it, you know, I picked Alcorn to win the to win the West. Um, I, I think the Braves will probably clip JSU at home. Um, it, at least from my perspective, but um, that's still a lot to be to be shown there. But uh, Bama State's a team that you know there's so much varying uh, opinions on this team. Um, some people think they're gonna win the East. I I, I I lean more toward them being the third team out of the group uh, because they still have a lot of a lot of variables, just like everybody else. But um, they did beat JSU last year. Um, and they've been they played JSU pretty close, you know. I mean, they you know they beat them in the spring of twenty one. Uh, they lost to them um, in twenty twenty one fall. They lost to them in the the uh, fall of twenty two, and then they beat them last season. So it's been a you know it's been an up and down uh, uh, matchup there. Um, I, I you know I think that those two games are if there's any any games that JSU going to slip up in that's not a surprise loss. Um, other than family would be those two. Um, I, I, I say, you know, they, they split the difference. If they lose the family, they split the difference and, and, and lose one of the two. If they beat family, they might drop both of them. Who knows? But, um, my prediction for JSU is nine and three, uh, six and two in conference. And that's six and two mark can win the East for you. Um, especially this season, because I do think that, you know, a lot of teams are going to kind of knock each other off here and now. Um, I don't think anybody on paper is clear cut better than anybody else. That's not to say that, you know, that's not to say that somebody can't go on a run and, and, and win games. But I think this this schedule shapes up very well for JSU. Um, and that's why I think, you know, just I think 11 and one is, is, the, is the ceiling. I think this team can, you know, they have they really only have um, three swag toss ups and, you know, you can throw Southern and Grambling in there as toss-ups to an extent, um, but those are non-conference games. So, you know, if you flip, you know, if 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 you know if they if they don't lose, you know, this team can if they if they play well and stay healthy, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball and special teams, you know, do does what they need to do. This could be a team that makes that run, but I you know I'm I'm leaning more to the middle um, than than that right now. Um, I think the floor is seven and five. I I don't really think this team is gonna lose more than that, um, and that's basically just you know moving a couple of toss of games here and now. Um, the the key to this team right now is um, when you look at the schedule, um, you have two you know you have two big games back to back in Southern and Grambling, but they don't they're not conference games in terms of standings, but they're still big games. And then you follow that up with. Uh, Texas Southern and Alabama and them, two games you should be favored in. Then you got the big one at family after a bye week. So you know if you you could you could conceivably come into this game into the family game at five and one. And if you're five and one and you're sitting at two and zero in conference, um, the sky's the limit. You win that game, you may not drop a game until you play Bama State or Alcorn because that, like I said, after the family game, you get Bethune, Pine Bluff, and Valley. You know, I'm not saying any of those games are going to be ex- excessively easy, but they're a game that you're going to be heavy favorites in. Um, and then, you know, you close out with those two games. So I, I think that this team, I think they their trajectory is upward. Uh, I do think that a lot of people are underrating this team. I, I think that they're not the third team out of the, out of the top three. Uh, and I think they're more closer to one than anything. Um and so that 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 JSU fam, you battle is obviously gonna shape a lot. Um, fam, you has a lot to say about the early about about the East Division race, especially early because they get Bama State and JSU um, early in the season. Um, but I, I like the Tigers' chances here. I think that they have a good opportunity as long as they you know as long as they avoid the injury bug and, and that that run defense can uh, improve. Because I do think they may finish the season with the top rushing offense in the conference, and if the passing attack is 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 um is, is complementary to that that run game, I think that makes that offense that much better. 
So with that being said, man, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See well signing out, and I'm going to catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.